Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and I wanted to share this case with you. Uh, this is a really a great example of epithelioid hemangioendothelioma involving the lung. Uh, epithelioid hemangioendothelioma is a complicated tumor. It is a uh, tumor that behaves differently depending on where it is located in the body, when it's in the liver or the lungs. It uh, behaves more like a malignancy, although usually a slower growing one. And when it's in soft tissue or skin, it has a somewhat better prognosis depending on the exact situation. Um, I have other videos about that that can go more in depth into the clinical aspects. But what I wanted to focus on here is the morphology. These, are, these tumors are a vascular tumor, but they don't look like a vascular tumor at first glance. They look more like an epithelial tumor because they are made of epithelioid cells, cells with round nuclei and abundant cytoplasm, and they have a tendency to be arranged in nests or cords or aggregates the same way epithelial cells would grow. So in the lung, an organ where it's much more common to get epithelial tumors, like carcinomas, for example, in the, in the past, a long time ago, uh, these, these tumors were initially thought to represent an unusual variation of a carcinoma, like a bronchiolo-alveolar type carcinoma, because the tumor in the lungs has this unique pattern that it doesn't really show in other organs or in soft tissue or skin, in that it grows within the alveolar spaces, within the air spaces. So that's what you're seeing here. All of these uh, nodules or islands of tumor cells are growing and protruding into the alveolar spaces, which gives it a very unique appearance that kind of is different than in other sites. Uh, one other thing that, that epithelioid hemangioendothelioma shows in, in any site, it has a tendency to have this really dense background stroma, and you can either see it as either blue myxoid stroma or dense pink hyalinized sclerotic collagen or a mixture of those, and that, that uh, tendency of both kind of hyalinized sclerotic collagen plus minus myxoid change makes it look almost chondroid or cartilage-like sometimes, or, or chondromyxoid. So uh, here there's even a little bit that really does start to look kind of cartilaginous. So the, uh, the uh, uh, myxohyalin or chondromyxoid type stroma with epithelioid cells is a really good clue to think about epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. Now, I said at the beginning that this is a vascular tumor, but you'll notice that there are no blood vessels here, right? Normally we think vascular tumors they're made of endothelial cells, and they should be forming blood vessel channels. So that was part of why uh, in the early days uh, when this tumor was first uh, described, people didn't know that it was vascular at first. And then it was eventually discovered and realized by, by my mentor, Sharon Weiss, and others that, uh, that these tumors are actually endothelial in origin. And now we have immunohistochemistry that can prove that further. So uh, the, the one clue, though, that you can see microscopically is uh, to, the, to the endothelial nature of these tumors is that even though they don't make well-formed blood vessel channels, they often do have little bubbles or vacuoles in their cytoplasm. And sometimes within those, you can see little fragments of degenerated red blood cells like we're seeing right here. And so these are called blister cells. And this is the hallmark feature, or one of the hallmark features of epithelioid hemangioendothelioma, although you can see vacuoles in other things. For example, many carcinomas have intracytoplasmic lumens with mucin production. Um, there are other vascular tumors that can have vacuoles in their cytoplasm, like uh, epithelioid hemangioma, which sounds similar, but is totally unrelated to the tumor we're seeing here. So um, uh, these little blisters, though, if you have epithelioid, tumor cells making nests or cords with a chondromyxoid background and little vacuoles or blister cells with degenerated red cell fragments. Think about epithelioid hemangioendothelioma. And these tumors will stain with the usual vascular markers like ERG, CD31, and CD34. And um, to further prove the diagnosis in cases uh, where the morphology isn't clear or if you have a small sample, you can do molecular testing. The majority of these tumors have a gene fusion uh, uh, involving the WWTR1 gene and the CAMTA1 gene. But a small subset have an alternative fusion of uh, YAP1 and TFE3, and those sometimes look a little bit different. Um, so I just wanted to show this because I thought it was a really nice example of the blister cells. And the nuclei of epithelial hemangioendothelioma are large, somewhat atypical, but in most cases not dramatically 
uh, ugly and pleomorphic, although there are some cases that can have higher grade uh, features and look uglier. But uh, the, uh, the, this case is really good because it shows the blister cells and it also shows this dramatic intraalveolar growth that originally made uh, earlier pathologists think that this might be a type of bronchioloalveolar carcinoma. And then uh, the name was, uh, was uh, given to it of IVBAT, intravascular bronchioloalveolar tumor, uh, and with the idea uh, arising that these maybe actually are endothelial, uh, not epithelial, not carcinomas. And then uh, over time, the name uh, given to it by, by Sharon Weiss and Franz Enzinger uh, was epithelioid hemangioendothelioma, and that name has stuck. So uh, these are a really interesting and unique tumor, uh, relatively rare and un uh, uncommon. And this is a really good example of the unique growth pattern that they show in the lung. Uh, it's a, a pretty dramatic case. And um, I will put some links down below to other videos and resources about epithelioid hemangioendothelioma so that you can uh, watch those for further learning. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short video and uh, have a great day.